Guano day, Guano day, Guano day, Guano danahi, Guanalia, Guano danahi, Guanalia, Guano danahi. Guanali a guano de Guanali a guano de Guanali a guano da My name is Jacob Owari. I'm an Algonquin from uh, Western Quebec. And um, my last name. Wawate means Northern Lights, yeah, so I'm very proud of that. Yeah. So, anyways, when uh, I began this journey, it was because of my grandfather. Yeah. I was doing uh, an education study and upon uh, community philosophy of education. So. As I began questioning the people, my grandfather says that I was doing very good at you know teaching the children and so on. But what he requested that I should do a study, learn uh, the traditional education system of our people. So uh, I was the director at the school back then. And uh, I took a sabbatical and I went to my grandmother. Why my grandmother is that uh, she, she was raised by her great-great-grandmother who lived to be 128. And my grandmother was adopted when she was two by her great-grandmother. So anyways, for 14 years un until the day she died, is that uh, they live uh, off the land. They didn't live in a community. Yeah. They, they always live on the outskirts of the community living off the land because that's the way the great-great-grandmother lived. Yeah. So she hardly used any European material such as pots and stuff like that. They just used the land. So anyways, This is where I began learning how to hunt fish, how nature was dispersed. So as I was doing that, many legends were recounted to me, and I began to put them together. I went on a 14-day fast to learn uh, In my quest, it was to learn what was the lifestyle prior to your European setting. So, one of the most important things that came up was the Turtle Island story, yeah. where it began. Uh, to tell me things, yeah. So, anyways. In 1999-2000, there was a logging issue, and my uncle had asked me to, to protect his territory. So I claimed myself as a member of the Turtle Island people, not really understand, understanding what I was doing. Yeah. So I began to study geography. and. Uh, when I looked at uh, North America, I began to see what they were what the elders were talking about when they recounted the story of the Turtle Island. This would be North America. There are 13 mountains in North America, and this is where I come from, on top of this mountain. That would be in Quebec, and then you would have the Pennsylvania. Uh, New York State Mountain, and then you would have Virginia, 
and then Louisiana. And then you would have Northwest Territory, Ontario, Manitoba, Colorado, uh, New Mexico, and Texas. And then you would have Saskatchewan, Wyoming, Utah, and uh, Arizona. And uh, Grandpa told a part of the story. He says that the turtle was tilted sideways a bit. And this would be the Rockies. So what we see as Newfoundland, uh, Nova Scotia, Long Island, would be the tip of the mountains over here. Baffin Island would be the tip of that. Began to, the, to see the turtle here. And the tectonics would follow the marking of the turtle as well. So they had six rivers, which is part of the constitution of the Six Nation. The Six Nation meaning the animal nation, the bird nation, the fish nation, the plant nation, and the insect nation, plus the human. That would be the six. Those are the creatures of North America. So in the six rivers, you would have and we got to get the blue so we could see the, the river system. So you would have the St. Lawrence, Mississippi, Colorado, Fraser, Mackenzie, and Churchill. So this would be the arteries, two from the neck, two from the armpits, and two from the back leg. Now what we call uh, Cuba, Dominic Republic, Haiti, and all those islands are the knuckles sticking out of the water. And as my grandfather said, yeah, the turtle is tilted sideways a bit, so it's underneath the water. So this is what I began to see as I studied geography, geology, yeah, how everything is dispersed upon North America. And then when you look at uh, Greenland, you could see the eyes sticking out of the water on one side, and there's a mountain on the other side. Yeah. I thought I was going crazy at one point. Yeah. The mountain ranges in Mexico follows the center of the tail. Yeah. Where do you see? The meteor fell in, in the Gulf of Mexico is actually the floor of the ocean where you see in three-dimensionally the back leg and the tail and the actual floor of the ocean which is the same depth on the other side of the turtle's tail. So anyways, this is one continent that we're talking about. In the other continent is that they say they create, uh, the people kill their god and they cut off their head, which would be the time of uh, Ulysses, yeah. where he blinds the giant, the cyclone. That would be our third eye. So I began to look at what the world looked like on the other side. Like they say, you know, 
the native people pick up the head and they were supposed to bring it back at one point. So they tied it to the turtle's tail. And this would be the head. This would be the Amazon River. Tikikaka Lake that goes down to the sun. And you got Chile, you know, with the mountain ranges. And you will, uh, uh, and on the other side, you have Kilimanjaro, which would be the elbow. The shoulder would be the uh, European Alps, the Russian Alps, and the Himalayas that starts from Indonesia all the way up to Japan. And you got Australia, New Zealand, Madagascar, Fuji Islands, Hawaii Islands, and the Canary Islands. And in this story is that we were supposed to bring it back. Native people were supposed to bring it back. The people of the land. Bring back. The head. So what's happening is that it's sliding over, upwards like that. It's like this parcel of land is floating. Just as the turtle is sliding over, it's bringing it back. So there's a, like a, what we call the bath, is that it's like pushing sand and there's like a platform and then it drops off to the actual floor of the ocean. So you got that on one side, and this side is deep. Now there's two, uh, two currents in the ocean, one going up north, and the other one going down south, passing by Australia, coming to bounce off South America and back up to hit uh, Asia. And this would be the harders, and you see the temple every time there's an hurricane. And the tempo seems to get faster in the last few years, which means it's emptying out. The, the artery, it's like when you cut off the neck and you got two arteries, yeah, and they're pumping blood. And this is what creates the pressure in the ocean. It creates a disturbance in the ocean, which creates a disturbance in the air, which creates the tornado. The hurricane. So one of them goes up and the other one goes down and goes around the world before hidden Asia. As I studied oceanography, the leg is like this. And once you put the head back here, you see this creature. Why the two creatures? They're the two, that's what we call the two grandfathers. They're the longest living creatures that walks on the earth. And they have the memory of the evolution of the earth itself. Where they recount the birth of the of our planet. So as I began to see all of this, yeah, it changed my my vision. It reinforced my belief upon Mother Earth. Why do we call it Mother Earth? Because yeah. this is the female entity. That's the grandmother, the turtle. And the male is that it has, this is a musk gland of the elephant. When it mates, it starts to run. This musk gland starts to run. That's the male entity. And it has lost its vision upon where it's gone. And this is what's happening upon the earth right now. 
So when we go back to this turtle, the mineral that we're taking off from the land is part of the communication system of uh, our being. The nervous, the central nervous system communicates with these minerals which is the microwave, electricity, yeah. All the communication system that we use, vibration. Yeah. But since there's no more minerals, there's no more contact, this is when you become a diabetic. Because there's no more pulse on the lamp. Receptors, we have taken them out. We are using them for cars, for buildings, for whatever we use as metal, different type of metal that we use. So the, 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 nerve, the nerve system is not communicating anymore. We're blocking every single river system which is like blocking the veins. We're getting uh, what you call it, cholesterol. Yeah. Those are the damps. Yeah. Where we're pumping the oil, which is the heart section of this one, and the heart section of the elephant as well. Biologically speaking, we don't see what we are doing because we have been blinded. Atlantis speaks about these two creatures. Atlantis speaks about uh, space age. They have foreseen it. Yeah, foreseen everything that was going to happen. And in our legend, it says that uh, we were going to be hurt at one point. Yeah. Where hardship will come. Even the Bible spoke about it. Where water was going to be considered as coal. And today we see the water receding. The St. Lawrence has gone down two to six feet. Six feet now in the St. Lawrence alone. And the rest of the world is two to six feet. The aqua turf, what they call the aqua turf in Arizona, they have only about 25 years left. Because every time we make a, a dam, it's like taking liquid out of the body and putting it on a reservoir. So there's no more water upon the land. So how do we fix these things? How? Is that we got to start understanding where the, this creation is, how it's made natural process, yeah. And we are supposed to work with the natural process, not against it. Yeah. And this is what I'm sharing to the people. Yeah. To understand that uh, we are part of the natural works. Yeah. My grandmother said, I should eat this. So I did. I skinned it. The legs of the turtle are red, red meat like beef. The back strap are like pork. The chest 
is like bird flesh. The stomach is like insect flesh. I forgot the name of that thing again. The placenta. It's not really flesh. It's more liquid than flesh. Yeah. But it has consistency, which is the same type of flesh that the insect has. And the neck is uh, like fish flesh, white meat. Exactly like a fish. Yeah. So when we look at it as living self, we start to see how all the creatures that the Creator has created, the animals. The bird, the insects, the fish, yeah. they're all there. You see the genetic of the land through the creatures. And when you see the number of creatures upon the land, upon the rivers, yeah. the rivers are like our vein, the living cells that are swimming within it is what we see in the river system. By seeing the number of all the creatures, we see the state of the earth itself. So every time we buy a car, we're taking a piece of it. Every time we gas up our car, we know where it's coming from. Because yeah, it's the blood of Mother Earth. And we don't see it. We are blind. As Jesus said, yeah, we do not know what we are doing. Because we have been blinded by the system that governs. The education system does not teach this as such. A world vision, global vision. The star system are part of that, yeah. which is part of the cosmology. Yeah. How everything is connected. Yeah. So I carry around. They may think this is just a bunch of bones. But uh, those are the creatures that help me understand. We're not the only creatures, but there's the others. This is what the nation, native nation of the Turtle Island are talking about. Relationship that doesn't matter which form you have you have a right to exist, to partake in a stream of life. Yeah. I would like my children to see that too. That's what I began to believe. Yeah. This is what I carry in my heart now. Not only in my heart, in my mind. Yeah. Where I live. Yeah. I have learned to survive through the skills what my grandmother taught me to live off the land. I don't need no more tools from the city. But I could also turn around and just go in the city and just disappear in front of an office, yeah, in front of a computer, and live in that fashion. Yeah. So with Cucumville Academy, what I would what I have been working on for the last 20 years is to combine culture yeah, into academic setting and vice versa. So both world could benefit from the teaching that I was asked to share. So I'm going to be going down to Alberta this summer, this spring sometimes. And I will share the same story. I've been walking on this path for over 20 years. 
I come from the industries because what I'm teaching disrupt industrialization. Mm -hmm. I disrupt government systems. I even disrupt the belief of uh, the catechism. We were called pagans because we didn't follow the same belief. I have been called a dissident because I don't see the same vision as they do. But yet I'm standing, I'm standing here, yeah. continuing sharing what I was told to share. Because yeah. this is not for me. It's for the next seven generations, as they say in the story. So the turtle will begin to turn. They'll begin to move. This is all the changes that is happening. So us as human, we got to start understanding what we are doing, upon what world we are, we are living in, how we are affecting it, and how we could cure it. I believe what the Bible says, what the Ten Commandments. When Native people say respect, it expresses the same Ten Commandments. What you say, respect, ruling. So understanding that uh, the land is made up of such a chief administrators, governments, have a better perception in order to administer these things more in a balanced way. To understand what their children will need. Yeah. What we call the children is the society. Yeah. The chief, prime minister, is the father figure. The queen is the mother figure. Yeah. So if they understood the natural process of the earth, the global vision, and such, they have a better understanding of how, what the people need, yeah. shelter, clothing, medicine, food, yeah. and the resources available, available, yeah, upon the land. Yeah. This is what uh, the chief got to understand. He's got to understand what his people will need yeah, to find somewhat of harmony, some peace in their life. And uh, our people, the way they explain that is through the bear, it's teaching. Yeah. A deer, a deer, doesn't learn to defend himself. He just learns how to run. A wolf will understand the carnivores. Those are the industries. Yeah. And they just eat. They don't need what these people need if the wolf was to be achieved. Yeah. So the teaching of the bear is that he eats every single creature, the insect world, the bird, the fish, the plants, the animal. Yeah. So that's like a chief that knows all his people, their weakness, their strength, and what have you. And what do they need to exist? That's the society that he's speaking of. Yeah. And this is what the, the bear teaches. Yeah. He understands the universe of where he exists and how his society coexists. Yeah. And that's how we represent our chief. He is the bear. Yeah. So, if you're just a wolf, you won't understand the, the plant world. You won't understand the insect world. 
so you might oversee what the needs of your society, yeah, which is composed of every single creature. And as a bear eats, he collects all these uh, bio properties, yeah, which balances his being. Yeah. And this is what we need to do, what we need to teach our children, to feed them yeah, what's in the, in the forest, to reconstruct their DNA. We have been eating so much at the McDon McDonald flower pot that their DNA has been changing, which create all the disease. Yeah. That's the property that uh, they're eating doesn't conform to their being. So let, let's say I, I, I don't want to eat pike anymore because it's too bony or I don't want to eat a muskrat because uh, it looks too much like a rat. Yeah. But what you're doing is you're throwing away the vitamin that your body needs. Yeah. So we must bring this back, the natural properties, not to produce properties. You see, like in a garden, when you first garden, your, your tomatoes are going to be about so big. The next year, it'll be smaller. And the year after, even smaller. Because it works like a sponge. It just takes up uh, the property that it needs for it to grow. And it, there's no more on the land. And it doesn't put anything back up on the land. So it becomes like a sponge, it just seeks it. Yeah. So, what I, so what we usually do is that we're going to put manure in there. What happens to the manure is that we're creating an infection so the properties could come from further down. Yeah. And we do that over the years, over the years, and the t land gets tired. That's when you start seeing raspberries around the, um, the fields, because it's trying to put back some properties. Yeah. The raspberry. Yeah. This is the this is the glucose. Yeah. That's trying to repair the land. When you just burn it, or you just clear cut it, blueberries are coming up. It's like having a scar on your skin. The first thing that's going to come up is crystal, which is base of sugar. The scab is 80% sugar. Yeah. This is the properties that are trying to rebalance the pH. Yeah. Each tree, the big white pine goes further down. He brings up the property for the next one to bring it up. And they work in sequence until the one on top, the grass and the, the small plant, gets the properties too, just as much as the big plants. Yeah. This is how it functions. But when you clear land, there's nothing that goes and gets it. So we put manure there, yeah, creating the infection so that sugar will come up in trying to yield the land. So. It's a relearning how to eat these things that are natural properties of the land, natural process. Yeah. And it's not genetically built up yeah, to the understanding of uh, the medicines that I've studied. Is that they take a, uh, a plant and they take only the property that they need forgetting the counterbalance properties of this product. So when you eat it, 
be just this one property from this one flower. It doesn't have its guardians to balance it, which creates side effects. You know, it just keeps on working. So it's to take the whole plant and use that, not to break it up. So we got to start learning how to use these properties in its natural form. Yeah. You know, even just drinking water out on the land. Yeah. That's a form of uh, inoculation, yeah. vaccination. You integrate a little bit of disease into your system. Yeah. That's what vaccination is all about, is to inject a, a disease, a virus, into your system so your system could start counter, counter fighting that disease. Yeah. And this is what we got to start teaching our children. Start making them drink a little bit, yeah. You know, so they their body could have the antibiotics within their system, yeah, fighting these natural things. Yeah. Many teachings will come out of it. Yeah. How to reconstruct your DNA, natural DNA not conform DNA. When somebody is sick today, yeah, is that there is a, a part of his genetic, genetics that's missing. So they go and get it from different plants or animal or what have you. Yeah. And they say, this is the patch you need. Because yeah. from what science is seeing is that there is a specific mole how human biology should be. So they go and get that property that they need you. And they say, this is what you need. But they're forgetting to put the counterbalance. Yeah. And this is why we start using the medicine. Yeah. Yeah. Like the dandelion. Yeah. Doesn't seem like much. But you can. Yeah, you could eat the flowers. I usually make a little batter. Yeah, it's a little sweet. Yeah, when you eat it. Yeah, so the children like it. You could make the salad. Yeah, natural. Yeah, natural ingredients, not confined to. Okay, this is the property that you need to. You know. So you you intake this, and your body begins to intake the natural product. You take the roots, cut it up, put it in the oven, and you make natural coffee out of it. You know, you just darken the root. Yeah. Plus it has medicine on it. Yeah. From the earth. <laughs> yeah. And these are the things that we gotta teach our children. I bring you a partridge. It's not just the partridge that I'm bringing you. It's the medicine that he has picked up for the, out in the woods, which has become hemp. And now we're in taking the medicine that we need. Yeah. So that's why they say when a native goes out, yeah, you accept what creator puts on your path because you need it in your body. And those are the, some of the teachings that we got to pass on to our children. What our children, children should be learning in school. Yeah. Yeah. Beginning to understand, you know, like, it's not the system, the education system that's wrong. Yeah. I see many benefits from the education system, yeah. how, st how study should be conformed yeah. to arrive at being a doctor. Yeah. So we learn biology. You know, da, da, da. 
or the equation that's necessary. Yeah. But now we, uh, we just turn it a little bit yeah. from the natural properties. How does the natural properties could rectify such situation? Yeah. Social setting. Yeah. How do we, uh, from living in the woods, how do we create a society yeah, with regulation? Laws. You could still base it upon the system. Yeah. It's a big spider web. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, those are some of the things that we need to do, you know, for the future. Yeah. What the future generation has to learn, you know, to find its balance. Yeah. Taking little steps here and there to rebuild the natural process, yeah. not genetically engineering it, yeah. not to assume creating theories that this thing might work. Yeah. The medicines that are being used are not really tested. Yeah. Sometimes it affects the following generation such as bird control. Yeah. What is bird control the, does? Yeah. It makes the body think that it's pregnant. Yeah. So what happens to the woman? Yeah. His body thinks, the body thinks that it's pregnant. So it's beginning to collect um, you call it, could call it fat, yeah, but nurturing, yeah, for the baby to grow. But there's no baby, yeah, so there's nothing eating it, yeah. So obesity is multiplying, yeah, through the generation. Yeah. It's just a simple thing, yeah. There is a natural thing that they use out in the woods. where they call it poison. Uh, I forgot what they call that plant in English. I know it in Algonquin, Kagagyajit. According to science, is that it's poisonous. But the woman used to drink certain quantity, which kills the egg. Revoke the egg so the woman doesn't get pregnant. but it doesn't affect uh, the system. Yeah. Those are some of the biological studies that could be done. Yeah. That needs to be taken to, to be observed. Yeah. Native people have been using it for thousands of years. Yeah. Bird control just started in 1960s. Now, uh, 50 years later, we see the side effects of it. Some women don't even, can't even have more children mm -hmm. yeah, because of the side effect. Yeah. Biologic, biological side effect. Because yeah. the theory, it was theorized which means assuming that this is the way it's supposed to work. Yeah. But we got to study what is factual now. Yeah. That's the future studies that needs to be done. Yeah. The children's got to learn these things. Yeah. So institutions got to somewhat open up the doors, yeah, for this process, the natural process, not theorized process, but the factual process. Yeah. And we gotta adapt to it, yeah, step by step, you know, and then nothing's gonna come up, uh, yeah, nothing's gonna change 
next day. Yeah. It's going to take a few, few days, a few decades. In order for this to rectify, they say, according to the prophecies, it's going to take seven generations. It took seven generations to bring us to the state where we are today. Yeah. And it's going to take seven generations to go back to, yeah. to reconstruct the DNA. And this is living with nature. Yeah. And we got to start understanding that nature is part of the creation. And this is what we're built on. As the same properties that are on the land, we are built the same way. The same biological component. We are building the same comp with the same components, the same mineral, same protein, but in a different formula, which create different entities, yeah. species yeah. of living forms. Yeah. Now we got to understand how they were, yeah. how they could contribute to our physical being. This is the research that needs to be done. Yeah. Yeah. Try to make it work. Yeah. So, for me, yeah, I, I have done this research for the past, since 1984 learning the science of our people. Everything that I've spoken about is that they learned it through observation, which is the basics of science. Observation. And that's what our people did too, but they call it traditional knowledge. but it is science. How did they get the sugar, maple sugar? It's true science, observation. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the difference between science and natural, uh, uh, traditional knowledge? They're the same thing. They've done, they've worked the same way. They are observed. Yeah. This as the mind explains astrology. Yeah. How the space work. It was observation. Yeah. Yeah. They accumulated knowledge. Through their language they express what they have acknowledged throughout time. So when one learns to what they call the traditional language of the native people, what they will find is the philosophy of how the society has a evolved. What does that society have acknowledged? That's why those words were created. So in the perception of the native people, if they understood their own language, yeah, they would see how their society has, a, has evolved, what, what, and how, and how they felt about it, because the language expresses it. Yeah. That's the importance of the language itself. How they perceive each creature is recounted in legends. Yeah. Yeah. 
and they express yeah, what they have understood from them. And they will understand the philosophy. <laughs> yeah. So, like what I do back home, is I take my children up on the land and I teach them what I see, what I find in each plant, and how do I benefit from them. I don't have no electricity out in the woods, so it's easier for me to take them out on the land. Yeah. So they could start observing what's laid out. Yeah. Instead of looking at a computer and yeah, games. Yeah. Got to bring them out to the natural world. Start to make them participate with the, what the Creator has given. Yeah. In a way, if you wanted to see paradise, yeah, the Garden of Eden, all you have to do is just erase everything that the human created and you'll see the creation itself and how it was laid out. And those are the things that we got to teach our children. And that's the responsibility of the chief and council, yeah. ministers and prime ministers, queen and popes. Yeah. They have that responsibility to show what the Creator has given us and how to administer those things. Yeah. Not just to grab the riches, yeah. the sweet stuff, yeah. but to share. Just like the Jesus miracle, yeah. when he multiplied the fish. The fish to me in the story is that it's everything that is natural. There is enough for everybody. And the bread that he multi multiplied. At that time, the wheat was considered as gold. If you had some, you were rich to have bread on your table. But life has all the riches. And there's enough for everybody, and there's some left over if we're careful with it. That's the beauty of it. So I say thank you to the, all the grandfathers that have taught me their wisdom, the grandmothers, for what they have shown me, what they cared for. All these things were, had disappeared in my life when I went to boarding school. I had to struggle to learn those things again. Because yeah. everything was a race, even my own language. I couldn't speak it. I didn't know how to hunt. I couldn't find nothing out on a lot. So I'm very grateful for my grandmother. Yeah. I'm very grateful for my mom, for what she had fed me. People thought we were poor. Yeah. And I didn't even know how rich I was. Yeah. Yeah. So I say thank you to my mom, too. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the things that I like to share to the children, to start looking at, to start studying these things go to school for these things so they could promote their well-being. Yeah. I might be diabetic, yeah. but 
What I have learned through it is the teachings. And the teaching is what I'm passing on, not my disease. So anyways, this is what I was taught to share. It's not for me to make money out of, but it's to make people realize where we are living in the natural world. Because we cannot live without them. They could live without us. So we must how to respect them and understand them because they have teaching for each one of those. Without the creatures, we don't exist. Without us, life will continue. So it's our choice to be extinguished, extinguish ourselves or not. My baby made me a bundle. I would like to see what the ancestors I've seen which I have partly seen, but this is my prayer, my baby's prayer, for it to see life too. To understand how precious life is. And that life should continue. This is my baby's prayer. She's five years old. She was five years old when she made this bundle. She's six now. And I hope there is a place for her to walk on and to hear the music of what the Creator has created and to understand it. So I teach her to respect it. Yeah. Genetically speaking, we were born from the natural resources. It's like a flower in a flower pot. Now we're eating from McDonald's flower pot, which is creating a change in our biological system, which creates diabetes. I want my baby to have an healthy life. That's what I wish for. And that's what I understand from our prayers. I was given this teaching to share. So all the children of the world could benefit from it. Not for me. That's the understanding I got yeah, from what I what I'm teaching now. Yeah. So I'm doing my best. The onus of the Indian people to prove that they had a system. This is a genesis. It starts off with a little story called the Turtle Island. Gwanalia Gwano Danahi Gwanalia Gwano De Gwanalia Gwano De Gwanalia Gwano Da Hey, Da Ho. 